Good morning. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. How are you? <laughs> okay. It's been a morning. We had a few technical difficulties this morning, but we're here now. We've made it. Sorry for um, being a couple minutes late. <laughs> yes. Uh, I think... I think it was actually on me. I really do. I think I could have just started it like normal, but we're trying to advance through the next levels of this broadcasting software. And uh, we're trying something new this week. And it might have been a little much for me. <laughs> and um, it is brand new and it is live and you can't test live. <laughs> no, man. Yeah. Li I don't know if I'm made for live TV. <laughs> mm, no, I'm thinking not. <laughs> <laughs> But we're here. We have our coffee. My mug today is uh, from my my brother. He's a traveler. He got it in Helsinki. So I have a Helsinki right. mug. That's probably the closest I will ever <laughs> get to Helsinki, Finland. But awesome. <laughs> my mug this morning. Uh, mornings are for coffee and contemplation. My favorite Hopper quote from Stranger Things. So wonderful. That's great. That's a really cute mug. And I couldn't agree more. Right? I love me some popper. <laughs> <laughs> I've actually never, I watched like four episodes of Stranger Things and I just couldn't get into it. What? How can you I not know. get into it? It's, it's awesome. I'm actually at that point where I think it's time to watch it again. I think yeah. last year at this time, I was like catching up on seasons one and seasons two before season three started that I was like, all and we were doing a Stranger Things program at the library. That's true. That's true. With all Stranger Things right now, this time. So I'm very much um, in my Stranger Moods thing. Stranger Things mood. There we go. Yes. <laughs> and uh, yeah, love me some Hopper and his little his little Hopper dance. So yeah. And you know, it's weird. I'm like that too. There's things that you just kind of like given a certain time of year, or maybe because like you were saying, you were really into it at a certain time. Like last, I remember our Stranger Things program, you did the escape room. It was like, you know, there was, yeah. you had to be into it uh, there for a while. And so because of that, sometimes then you just associate that thing with that time of year, or maybe that's when it's always released for streaming or released on DVD or something. And um, that's when you always watch it. It's like that time. And I'm that way about some things too. I think I, can't think of one now, but especially like things that are released at that time. And then you always associate it with like summer or fall. Yeah. 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 So no, I just couldn't, for whatever reason, couldn't really get into it. Um, good morning to everyone. Well, Melanie has right. also only watched the first four episodes. I think it's in part because I'm not super sci-fi-y and like monster-y is part of it. And then another part of it is that it was about kids. And I think I have a harder time like connecting when it's yeah. about kids. Yeah. But I know people really like it. And uh, I was excited when we did that program and uh, <laughs> we got, I think the escape room went really well. <laughs> it, it did. It was a lot of fun. And the waffle bar was just the, the best. How can you have <laughs> a waffle bar? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's all about the egos. Well, I know we wanted to talk about, we we're already talking about, it. I know we wanted to talk about today, like, what do we like watching and what do other people like watching? Um, but before we do that, I just really quick, I did bring some stuff to share because as I've said before on here, I am the technical services librarian, which means all day I'm surrounded by all the new books and the best thing about it is just like, I love sharing them. And so, you know, I thought this would be a good place to do that. So the first book that I have, um, it's relevant because this is Father's Day weekend. And this is a book that is intended for new dads, but I think that it could be appropriate for any father figure in your life. And of course, by father figure, I mean the person who was responsible for instilling in you the value of a terrible joke. Oh, I think yeah. we all have one of those in our lives. Doesn't have to be specifically a dad, but it's dad jokes for new dads. And you can see the cover is an adult fist <laughs> fist bumping a baby fist. So we're already, you know, we're in good shape here. Oh yeah. Um, and so I just, things like this, you don't often think about existing. Um, how to embarrass your kids early, but it's something you can check out of the library. And I just thought, well, first I thought that we might ask how people feel about dad jokes. And dad jokes, I think, cover usually puns, but also just anything you might refer to as a groaner, something that makes you roll your eyes. Um, and I feel like some people really feel strongly, really feel like negative about jokes like that. They just don't like them. 
Yeah. But I'm one of those people who I just, they really amuse me and I think they're right. funny. Me too. Yeah, I, I, I love dad jokes and um, oh, my dad told the worst jokes he did. It was awesome. We still have his jokes years later. <laughs> That's great. And so I thought maybe people could, if if you wanted to, if you're watching in the comments, if you want to share your love or loathing for the concept of dad jokes or some of your favorite ones, because I was going to read one or two from here. I won't spoil the whole thing, believe me. Um, but I did mark a couple. For example, what time of day do parents change the most diapers? In the wee hours. Ah. <laughs> you know. See, you're laughing. You're laughing. Um, my friend keeps insisting on calling himself a communist. I don't like it much, but Soviet. <laughs> I know. I know. I know. I know. Dad joke. I uh, admit it. I have I, been I tell a few. I know they don't even like, they don't even make me like audibly laugh. They almost just kind of make my eyes water. Like I just like, I don't know. They're just so funny. We'll do one more. Um, how do cats learn to clean themselves? They go to Catholic school. Huh? I know. Yes, Lily is remembering with me how bad my dad's jokes were. Oh my gosh, really? Yes. Yeah. One of his favorites. We, we lived on the, the border of Ohio and West Virginia, so there was that state rivalry, you know, and mm -hmm. uh, West Virginia kind of has a, 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 what is that word? Reputation? Reputation, thank you. Oh, nice. <laughs> Backwaters place and like, oh, you know, I can't even tell it. I can't even tell it. It's not appropriate for. All right, we won't do that here. You can just leave it to everyone's imagination, which somehow seems worse. Um, exactly. It's not worse, but yeah. <laughs> All right, I've got one. We've got one in our comments. Oh, Tara says, "What did Fifty Cent do when he was hungry?" I would like to know the answer to that. I do not know. And then we have one from Liz. Dad, did you get a haircut? And the answer is no. I got them all cut. Those are the ones <laughs> I love. Okay. Oh, fifty-eight. Ah. That's what Fifty Cent did when he was hungry. Fifty-eight. <laughs> I know, I know. Um, the next book I brought, totally different, um, but just in case you didn't know that this was coming out, um, the author, Max Brooks, the author of World War Z, has a new book called Devolution, and it is, I believe that there is a, a volcanic eruption, and um, after like the, the death and the massacre that happened in that, oh, we lost Leah, in that volcanic inter uh, eruption, um, there she is. <laughs> they discover that perhaps Sasquatch exists. And so the, it's the same setup as World War Z where it's like interviews and science and narrative and all of this together presented as if it were real. Maybe it is. Um, but with Sasquatch Bigfoot set up yeah. instead of zombies. So if you liked World War Z, I think that this is probably a great, this is probably very similar and like equally as entertaining. And I feel like some people handle stressful events such as a pandemic by wanting to avoid stress in their entertainment. But some people like to dive right in. Dive right in. And that's for the people who like to dive right in. I whenever I hear about Sasquatch, I think of my nephew who liked to call it Scratch Watch. It was just like the way he said it was just so cute. It was just that is really, really cute. And way less scary. That's very cute. Yeah. Yeah. Did you read World War Z? I did. I really liked it. Yeah. Anyone in the comments read World War Z? I actually haven't. Um, it always sounded, I liked the format of it. The I actually listened to it and, you know, the interviews, it, it works really well as an audio book, I thought. So. Okay. Well, it did it because, again, because of that, like, different types of documents that were in the book, it probably kept it moving mm -hmm. audio-wise and, yeah. yeah. For the people who prefer to escape. Um, when things are stressful. Uh, this is Party of Two by Jasmine Guillory, I think you pronounce her name. Um, and I'm not really a romance reader necessarily, but I've seen this promoted a lot and I think she is a really popular romance author um, and well-liked. Well and this is um, 
in some ways, every romance plot is sort of similar. But in this one, there's a lawyer. The woman is a lawyer and she has this flirtatious evening with a man who it turns out is a hotshot junior senator. She's not comfortable necessarily being in the public eye as dating a senator, um, and they are at loggerheads about a lot of things, but I suspect that they get together. <laughs> I suspect that it works out for them. Um, but I have seen the romance. romances, not always. <laughs> right. Um, so I don't know that I'm spoiling anything. I haven't read it, but it just, you know, you kind of imagine. Um, but I have read, I've just seen this one promoted a lot and um, heard a lot of good things about it. And summertime is a great time to indulge in a lighthearted romance. Melanie says that escapism is the way to go. And Mary says that the movie adaptation of World War Z had a great beginning, but was not the best adaptation otherwise. Mm, yeah, I kind of have to agree with her. It was very yeah. not like the book in a lot of ways, but in the yeah. little books. <laughs> She's yeah. turned me on to a couple of really good ones. I, really? I, if you're zombie books, you've got to read the Mira Grant uh, News Flesh series. Um, Feed is the first one. Um, Feed, Blackout, and Deadline, or Feed, Deadline, and Blackout, I don't remember the order, but it starts with Feed. Um, it is the best zombie trilogy out there. That's awesome. That's good to know. Are those on audio? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Mira Grant is the author. Uh, Feed is the first book. Cool. All right. I think I have, I have two more things. Okay. I just can't help myself. I can't help myself. Every day <laughs> yeah. I have all these new books across my desk and I just, I want to talk about them. I know. Um, another sort of a variation on things being, the world being unpredictable and things being stressful. This book is called In Praise of Walking oh, yeah. by Jane Amora. And it's a, not just a nonfiction book and it is just kind of about all the different ways all the different benefits to walking about how humans are one of the, you know, as a bipedaling creature, pretty unique and um, about what walking does for our brains, what walking's done for us in history about making cities walking friendly um, about how you learn to walk. It's just kind of like touches on all aspects of walking. And I found that that's something that I've done a lot. I do a lot, no matter what I, I like that. But when we were shut down, for those weeks, I took a walk almost every single day and it just was a really great way to kind of clear your head, be outside, get some sunshine. And um, I take a walk every day at work at lunchtime, even if I have to carry an umbrella because it just gives you that little break. Yeah. And, um, I find when I've got a lot of thinking to do, a walk is a great outlet for me. It's, you know, if I can get out there and walk, it, it, it gives me time to work through the problem in my head. Yeah. Um, I really like walking. What is going on today? I don't know. We can hear you. <laughs> well, I'm glad you can hear me. I don't know why I keep disappearing. I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> so, but yeah, okay. I, I, love, I love going for a walk. And I think that walking is one of those things that people started doing a lot more during the shutdown because, mm -hmm. you know, you go out and do other things, but you could go outside and take a walk. So, yes. Yeah. Like walking is one of those. Yes. Yeah, I agree. And so I just thought that was a really, like in that sense, kind of timely and just interesting. Those are the types of books I like to read. This just some sort of like nonfiction take on some concept. And I always find that I learn a lot, but they're not, they're not super challenging either, you know, because they just kind of a broad overview of something. So mm -hmm. I will probably be reading that one. And then my final book is one that I read yesterday. Um, I won't talk about it too much because I feel like there's a fair chance that this is going to show up in a story time at some point. Um, I really want the cake is what it's called. <laughs> that is an artist rendering of me and cake. Um, but this is a children's picture book and it has um, a rhyming style. So it's really fun to read, which is why I think there's a fair chance it might end up on one of our story times on Facebook. Um, but basically it begins with, there's a smell I can't ignore. It's wafting through the kitchen door. It's time for me to find out more. I think it might be cake. <laughs> and the book is about the girl just desperately wanting this cake that her mom made that she's not allowed to have. I really, really identify with that book. That's what I thought it too. Fabulous this morning. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, 
just you can always look that up in the catalog. It's called I Really Want the Cake. And I, I love finding picture books that are fun to read as an adult. I mean, yeah. so many picture books are beautiful and wonderful and engaging to read no matter what. But ones like that that kind of they hit you as an adult, too, are really fun. <laughs> So those were the books I brought. I just couldn't not bring them today. Um, but I know we wanted to talk a little bit about what we were watching. And you mentioned Stranger Things. Yeah. And I'll segue into that with this Party of Two book. I said I don't read romances, but I will watch them. For some reason, <laughs> I don't have the patience to sit and read this. But I'm not ashamed to say if it were a Hallmark movie, I'd watch it. Right? I love Hallmark movies. Yeah. Um, if you are looking for a good romance, uh, a funny romance, I just watched uh, Lovebirds on Netflix. It was one of those movies that was supposed to go to the theater and instead of releasing it in the theater, they just sent it straight to Netflix. Um, Issa Rae and, oh, Kumail mm -hmm. Nanji, Nanjiani, um, they star in it and it's like, it's the funny, it's, it's really funny, very, very heavy on comedy. Um, but it's, it's an interesting romance because we break up in the first 10 minutes of it. Um, <laughs> but I won't tell you whether or not they get back together. But right. they, they just are thrust into a horrible evening and it's, it's really hysterical. That's awesome. Thank you for the recommendation because I feel like so much stuff is showing up on demand on different services. And I know it can be really difficult to keep track of all the various services, but um, because that's how without theatrical releases, some places are pushing them there. And it's just been hard to keep track of what's where and what's new and what do I have to pay for and what's free. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's it's a lot of like the on-demand stuff that, that has gone streaming, they went like 20 bucks for it. Mm -hmm. I love my library where I can get movies for free. <laughs> I know, I know. We have, and we have a lot of different options because of having Canopy too, I really yeah. like the options that are on Canopy. Um, we have a comment, I started watching Love Life on HBO and it is so, so good. Ooh. Oh, I have a comment from Susan, I'm gonna interrupt. Hi Susan, it is so nice to see you too. <laughs> I worked with Susan at the Monroe County Public Library when I worked there, wow. um, my previous job before this one. <laughs> um, yeah, I haven't been watching a ton of stuff and I find that happens in summertime because I'm just, Outside more doing the yard work, yeah, for better or worse. I'm in the yard a lot. I have to mow and do the you know all that stuff, and then also in the garden, which is fine. Um, and it stays light so long. I feel I don't spend, but once it starts to get darker earlier, and once fall and winter roll around, <laughs> then I'm watching TV all the time. <laughs> yeah. Um, that love life stars Anna Kendrick. I watched an Anna Anna Kendrick romantic comedy. Um. Oh, what was the name of the guy who started it with her? I can't think. I think it was like something like Mr. Wright um, was some some part of the title. It was like, what in the world? This is so crazy. But I loved it. It kept me laughing. Um, again, on Netflix. Okay. Uh, and I was thinking about Mr. Wright. It was very unexpected. Nice. <laughs> well, it's what it's fun to watch something unexpected too, because especially in the romance vein, you kind of know what you're getting, which is great and also usually what we're looking for, but it's also nice to watch something unexpected. Okay, this was about her dating life in New York City. That'll be yeah. fun. Yeah, I think that would be fun. I don't have the HBO extension or whatever, but mm -hmm. occasionally I'll sign up for it for like a month if there's something I really want to watch so, and then I'll cram everything into. That's actually one thing I did recently is I finally finished watching Veep. I'd watched maybe half yeah. of the series, but then I got the HBO add-on or whatever for a month so I could finish watching Veep, which I just think is so funny. <laughs> Sam Rockwell. Yes, that, that's who was in that movie, Tara, with, with Anna Kendrick. With Sam Rockwell, Mr. Right, and she loved it too. I'm glad you liked it too <laughs> because it's crazy, wasn't it? It was just, it was, yeah. Yeah. We also had a comment finally watching The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. That is also really enjoyable. It's really, that's one that I definitely associate with the time of year um, because I think when it first, they first put out new seasons is sometime in the winter time or that's how it, how it first started for me anyway. Right. And then um, I remember one day it was snowing really hard and I mean, there's not that many episodes in a season. And so I watched one of the seasons in a day that it was snowing. And so that's always for me, 
the time of year for that is winter. I wouldn't start watching it now because it's not winter now. It's not appropriate. <laughs> I know. And I kind of get frustrated when they move, like, the, the start of the new season around. Like, one year will start in September. The next year it's uh, and not the following September, but the February after yeah. so a year and a half later drives me crazy because it's like it's I not know. the time of year for this show. Right. But we're going to encounter that a lot now because of the pandemic and things yeah. not being able to have filmed. And along those lines, for any for anyone who does check out things from the library, um, I've noticed I got on there to order movies the other day and there was almost nothing <laughs> to choose from, to be perfectly honest. Um, there were a few things, a few TV shows, but as far as like big releases, there may have been like two titles that I ordered. Um, and I think that studios or whatever, the people who publish the DVDs um, are gonna be holding back titles for as long as possible because that's gonna be their only source of DVD income until the, things can start filming again and being produced and all of that. So. Um, normally I would be buying a lot more right now. And as it is, there just wasn't very much to choose from. And it was the same with CDs too, actually. I think at, we talked about sometimes there being delays with books because of the pandemic, but at least a book can be written by someone without having to be with anybody else. You can write the book, you can email the draft. You can't do a book or do a TV show or an album by yourself. And I, saw, so I saw an interesting article about California and how, you know, things are getting up and running again, but there are all those regulations and they've got like plexiglass between actors and they're like shooting one part of something here and one part of something there. And that they're actually bringing in like the the actor's real partner. Bold to shoot, and beautiful. To shoot the love scene. Yes. <laughs> to, to cut down on like, yes. you know, contaminations and then like, yeah, and then they'll when editing make it yeah. the other actor. Yeah. It's yes. Crazy. I I know. I saw that. I saw that article at least in relation to the bold and the beautiful bringing in this, like the partners of the actors, and I just thought that sounded like it's going to be awkward and funny. Um, <laughs> but but uh, soap operas are actually one of those things that we're able to go for a little bit longer because they film so far in advance that they were able to have episodes going for longer than a lot of other shows were. Um, but I, I don't blame them for needing to get back on it and trying to figure out how to do it because the soap opera is a daily thing. It, you yeah. gotta have your story every day. Um, Kelsey is recommending Lennox Hill, a documentary series on Netflix. Um, surgeries, including brain. I think that would be fascinating. I would love to watch that show. Thank you for the warning that there are brain surgeries filmed on there. I feel like it is important to go into it knowing that you're going to see a brain surgery. <laughs> and Mary is recommending I May Destroy You on HBO. Um, she says it's incredible. Oh, and by the President of Chillingham. Or Expanse. Nice. Nice. Well, I love hearing all these recommendations because these none of these are things that not only was I not watching, I wasn't even really aware of. So, right, yeah, yeah. I'm sometimes I get into my own little bubble, and like Netflix just recommends the same kind of thing over and over and over again. So I don't see some of the other stuff that's out there. Right. I admit that I, I do the same thing at the library. I go to like the section that I like, and I don't browse the other shelves. Yes. We, we all of us kind of get into that little habit mm -hmm. of to the familiar. Yes, I agree. And I will say that that is one, not to just like brag consistently about my job, but that is one thing that is really great because I see all this stuff. So I'm much more likely to come home and try something that I would never would have before because it's just all in front of me all day. Um, and I'm like, oh, well, maybe I'll read this party of two book um, when I wouldn't have even gone to the romance section otherwise. So exactly. Yeah. yeah. That's one of the things that I like seeing the, the, the catalog and all the different titles. I yeah, and we do have the new, we do have the section on our um, like catalog on, on our catalog page where you can see new, new on order. Can I break it down by type of material, you know, new fiction, new DVDs, that kind of thing, which is pretty cool. Um, it's there's still like so much, it can feel overwhelming even that way, yeah. but it's still a nice way to see what we've recently added um, because we do order things very far in advance to make sure that we have it on time. Um, and then also to give people a chance to place holds. Yeah. So when it, we, when we start talking about like what's coming out new this month, it's like, I don't remember because I ordered it back in February, you know, it's yes. months ago that I looked at what was 
brand new this month. So right, right. Yeah. And I don't know, I just I feel I feel disappointed that we're not going to be having as many new DVDs, but there's not really much nothing you can do done about, about that. If they're not making them the whole first page when I was on there looking for ones was coming soon, coming soon, coming soon, but they'd been coming soon. And I have no idea when they're actually going to be released. And by the time I got to the bottom of the page, it was movies that already ordered. So I think like some of the theaters are holding back movies, like instead of releasing them to the theaters, they're holding them back because they're waiting to like for people to be able to go to the theaters again. So yeah. like if it was supposed to come out, they aren't releasing. Yeah. So, yeah. It's just, it's a completely different world now. I know. And I really like going to the movie theater. So it would be, I am looking forward to being able to do that kind of thing again, but it will be weird if they don't have any movies to show. Right. Yeah. But just, yeah, the thought of going to the theater right now is terrifying. Like, <laughs> can't wear your mask when you're eating popcorn. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Until they make those kind that have like a flat for food. <laughs> eating hole. <laughs> Which I definitely need. Ever since we've been wearing masks at work, I just, I don't snack all day anymore. <laughs> I know. It's just disappointing. Yeah. It's much harder to uh, consistently snack. And then also we're not sharing food the way that we used to. So no one's bringing in yeah. like treats, treats. No one's bringing in like the banana bread. It would have to be probably like individually wrapped or something. Yeah. So fewer opportunities for me to eat <laughs> during the day. <laughs> we should be thankful, but we're not. We should be thankful. But in fact, I really want the cake. <laughs> <laughs> You can make your own. I know, I know. Did you make anything or do any cooking? Um, did you, I know that like the kind of joke is everyone made banana bread during the pandemic. Did you make anything or cook anything? Allison, I do not cook. <laughs> I don't know why people don't believe me when I tell them this. I do not cook. Lily will verify for you. I do not cook. You cannot get me into a kitchen without like bribing me. I don't cook. I stand, I, I, I retract my question. Did you make banana bread like everyone else did? In no, I did not make banana bread. I, I'm not even, I don't really buy bananas that often. And like, I don't know. No, I did not make banana bread, but um, I made some, I found that I could like, I cooked more meals like in the middle of the day because I had more flexible work schedule or whatever. So I did do some more cooking, but I didn't do anything outrageous, unfortunately. Mary made murder cookies. What are murder cookies? It's um, um, something about a recipe and <laughs> my sister just said that she laughed out loud when you asked me that question because she knows me so well. Well, here's um, okay. De desperate times call for desperate measures and perhaps the pandemic would have pushed you to learn a recipe but the pandemic didn't push me to learn how to turn a t-shirt into a mask because i'm so uncrafty not even that desperate time taught me like encouraged me to do a craft so i completely understand i really do <laughs> um, so i'm no, murder, cookies. Awesome. murder cookies um i forget the exact story um Okay, Maybe so Mary, Mary can share the link to where she found them. It's something okay. that I don't remember the story she told me. Um, okay, well, let's have a link to murder cookies because that definitely sounds disgusting. And I would like for it to be clarified <laughs> so it is not disgusting. Um, a okay. resident wants to get murder in their house, but instead found a cookie recipe. So she's looking for the link. She'll, okay, she'll I would be interested. It. I'd be interested to find that out. I don't really have. I like making sugar cookies a lot because I think they're really good and I like decorating them. But beyond that, I don't think I really have a baking recipe or a baking interest, I guess. Um, I like making cakes and stuff, but just it's so time consuming. Lily is trying to reveal my secrets. She says that I can cook. I just won't. <laughs> don't tell mom. <laughs> <laughs> My mom lives with me and she does all the cooking. And if she knows that I can cook, she'll make me. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, all right. We've been on here for a while. We should probably we have. I guess it's about time. Sorry for the delay. Sorry that we kept popping yeah. in and out. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, 
technology, you gotta love it, right? <laughs> yeah, we're doing we're doing the best we can. Um, so if anyone has any um any suggestions for things you'd like to talk about or hear about in the future, you're always welcome to leave them in the comments. Um, and if you further in the week have any thoughts about things to watch or recommend in that way, leave them in the comments there too. And we will uh, suggestions. We we'll come back and look at the comments later. So There's yeah, we do. And let us know. Yes, and we are we have high hopes for our abilities to use this software in the future to perhaps even include like other photos and videos. So we may even get to expand what we do on here. So recommend We're anything. There, obviously. So <laughs> next week hopefully we'll be on time. And uh yes. we'll see you then. Okay. See you then. Bye. <laughs> bye bye.